Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. It's a fatal crash we first told you about as breaking news last night on the night beat. Tonight we have more information on the person who was killed. People are trying their best to be safe this holiday season, but one small snag is getting in the way why COVID testing is becoming harder to get. And this local veteran not letting his ALS diagnosis stop him from living life, the challenges he's facing, and how he works even harder to overcome them. But first, tonight, the search continues for little Lena, the three-year-old girl missing now for a week and still no sign of her and no relief for her family. Lena Sarder Kill has been missing from her family's apartment complex since last Monday. The night team's Lee Waldman is live outside of SAPD safety headquarters. Lee, police utilizing all resources to find this little girl. Yeah, SP SAPD is saying they will not stop searching for Lena. They're redirecting the resources to be as proactive as possible. Also receiving federal help from the FBI down to the Border Patrol. Today, DPS telling us the Ember Alert for Lena is still active. Reissued tonight, she disappeared Monday, last seen in the playground area at the V.S. Del Cabo apartment complex in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. The FBI's rapid response team is helping in those search efforts. And at a vigil Friday, SAPD Chief William McManus said officers still have no leads, but they continue intense efforts to find Lena. And agents at border crossings are also searching for the little girl. Lena's father also at that vigil pleading for his daughter's return. Right now, there is a $150,000 reward for information on Lena. $100,000 raised by the Islamic Center of San Antonio and $50,000 from Crime Stoppers. And tonight, another Amber Alert still in effect for three children missing in Medina County. Three active Amber Alerts for Jonathan Lucas and Ariana Wright, who were last seen with their father, Jonathan Wright, Monday. Wright is wanted on several charges out of North Carolina for sex crimes against minors. According to the Medina County Sheriff, Sheriff, they're actively searching but need the public's help with tips on where to focus their efforts. Wright and his three children were last seen Monday near Settlers Pass, a neighborhood in Rio Medina outside of Castroville. In this case, the U.S. Marshal's Office is offering a $5,000 reward for information. We're going to continue following all of these search efforts on air here and online at KSAT.com. Live at Public Safety Headquarters, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Lee. We now know the name of a woman who died in a fatal crash after avoiding hitting a deer over on the north side. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying her as 43-year-old Laura Tiarina. A crash happening on Thursday on Jones Maltzberger just outside of McAllister Park. Police say the driver was in a white Honda Accord heading north. That's when officers say a deer crossed in front of her and she hit a tree along the southbound lane. Police say the woman was not wearing a seatbelt and died at the scene of the crash. This man is in jail tonight in connection to that Christmas Day fatal shooting on the north side we first told you about last night on the night beat. 28 year old Mason Lubitz is now facing a murder charge. That shooting happening at an apartment complex off of Larkspur near Lock Hill Selma Road. San Antonio police say there had been an ongoing dispute between Lubitz and the man he killed. When police arrived, they found Lubitz and the victim inside the same apartment. Lubitz surrendered to police at the scene. His bond is set at $200,000. As for the man who was shot, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office still has not released his identity. We also have an update tonight to that story we had as breaking news last night on the night beat. The victim of a fatal crash on Pleasanton Road in far south Bear County has been identified tonight as 54-year-old Samuel Paredes. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. BCSO says Paredes died after being ejected from the front passenger seat of a car. They also say that car collided with another vehicle. Emergency personnel worked to save Paredes, but he died at the scene. Deputies have not provided any further information about that crash. Now nearly two years into the pandemic, everyone knows the steps it takes to be safe for the holidays, especially with two different strains of COVID-19 variants circulating throughout the United States. However, the night team's John Paul Barajas spoke with travelers today who say finding ways to check their COVID status was a bit harder than expected. The holidays are always a busy time of year for traveling and getting together with friends and family. But with the Delta and Omicron variants spreading, it too could have a busy season. At the San Antonio International Airport, travelers had mixed emotions on COVID-19. No, I wasn't worried. I wasn't concerned. Every day's a risk. Every day's a gamble. 
I'm struggling with the allergies with the cedar, but uh, nothing, no concern with COVID. For people who did have COVID concerns, getting tested before traveling or gathering with family was and still is a challenge. They've been booked out since about last week as well. It's hard to find somewhere to conveniently go and get a test done, so it makes it hard. We checked a few urgent care clinics as well as CVS and Walgreens. All their appointments for today and the majority for tomorrow, if not all, were booked. So we tried finding at-home tests, but didn't have much luck. The three stores we went to were sold out. If you do find an at-home test, Dr. Ruth Bergren, the infectious disease specialist with UT Health San Antonio, wants something to be made clear. You have symptoms and you have one negative at home test, you are not out of the woods and you need to mask and not go expose other people and you need to get that test repeated. Dr. Bergren explained if you have no symptoms and take an at home test and get negative results, you should be fine. If you get negative results but do have symptoms, that's when you should repeat the test either at a clinic or with another at home test in 24 to 36 hours. And here in Bear County, as of December 23rd, our daily or our weekly average is 319 cases. And we won't get another update until January 3rd because of the holidays. And the Christmas cases we'll see probably won't pop up for another week or two. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, COVID cases are on the rise across the country, fueled by the highly contagious Omicron variant. With hospital staff stretched thin in many places, the CDC changing its guidelines for how long vaccinated health care workers should isolate before returning to work after a COVID diagnosis. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff with the details. The highly contagious Omicron variant continues to surge across the country. Hospitalizations and deaths are also on the rise, with the heaviest toll on the unvaccinated. Is that we are seeing unvaccinated Americans getting infected at very high rates, and that's the group I'm worried about because that's the group that's going to end up in the hospital. Dr. Anthony Fauci says studies show the variant is less severe, but stressed we don't want to get complacent. If you have many, many, many more people with a less level of severity, that might kind of neutralize the positive effect of having less severity when you have so many more people. New York doubling its daily positive case numbers in just a week. Ohio recording 443 deaths in just 24 hours. Florida reporting more than 125,000 cases last week. That's up from 29,000 the week before. Across the country, long lines for testing. Within the last seven days, uh, our testing has qu quadrupled from the uh, from the week before. Pediatric hospitalizations are surging too. In New York and other parts of the country, Ohio, Texas, Pennsylvania hit particularly hard. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, 170,000 children testing positive for COVID-19 just last week, an increase of nearly 28% in just two weeks. It's so important for those that are eligible and around, especially our children under five who are yet to, to get the vaccine, to be vaccinated, to really cocoon them, protect them, especially as we're entering the surge. Frontline workers stretched thin, leading the CDC to issue an alert outlining contingency plans for rising cases. Now recommending vaccinated and boosted health care workers who test positive can return to work after seven days if they're not experiencing symptoms. If staffing shortages and hospitalizations reach crisis levels, the CDC recommends those same workers should return to work after five days. But the general public is still being advised to isolate for 10 days after a COVID diagnosis. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. Here's something you might not know about. There is a federal program that will help pay for the funeral costs of a loved one who died from COVID. As of December 6, more than 200,000 people shared in the nearly $1.5 billion FEMA program. However, the nationwide death toll is topping 800,000, which means those who are eligible for funeral reimbursement might not be aware. So here's how you can qualify. You must have a death certificate from after May 16th, 2020, and it must show the death was attributed to COVID-19. You submit that information to FEMA's website. It can take up to 30 days for your application to be processed. However, that money is deposited within a few days if you're accepted. For more information, head over to ksat.com. Tonight, two women are recovering after being shot while heading home from a bar near downtown. That shooting happening just before 2.30 this morning on I-35 near Cesar Chavez Boulevard. San Antonio police say a vehicle pulled up next to them and allegedly opened fire on that vehicle. Both women inside were shot in the arm. They were able to get off the highway, drive to a nearby parking lot and call police for help. 
They were taken to the hospital. Police still determining the motive for that shooting. And it's a crime that might remind you of the Grinch who stole Christmas. A man sees two suspects allegedly stealing Christmas gifts from the trunk of his car. However, there's no happy ending here. San Antonio police say that man was allegedly shot by the suspects. It all happened around 3 o'clock this morning at an apartment complex in Stone Oak Parkway. The man was taken to University Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. As of now, police still looking for those two suspects. It is a... There we go. There we go. There's, there's yeah. your camera. It's a humid night out there. That's what yeah. I was trying to It's a little slow. All you got to do is step outside. You feel that humidity. <laughs> and in some places, uh, there's already fog that's redeveloped out there. And we are in for another foggy gray and damp morning tomorrow morning. I want to show you the areas that are currently dealing with fog, mainly up in the hill country, the higher elevations, but even in New Braunfels, visibility is down to six miles in a Fournia Valley. Take a look up toward Kerrville, visibility less than two miles right now in Kerrville. And by the start of the morning tomorrow, there will be dense fog, visibility less than a quarter of a mile in many places. So if you have family, friends, or loved ones who are planning on hitting the roads, or if you're planning on hitting the roads early tomorrow to travel, know that it will be foggy and misty in the afternoon warm and sunny kind of like it was today and it'll be warm and muggy for the rest of the year but a strong cold front is on its way it's going to arrive by this time next weekend so i'll have those updates for you in a few still ahead on the night beat we go down memory lane to reintroduce you to the amazing people we've met throughout the year on what's up south texas plus it's as simple as seeing someone in film with the same ethnic background as yourself yet many grew up not having that luxury we'll show you how two local aspiring filmmakers are hoping to change and improve film representation and up next we'll introduce you to a local veteran who is living with als and explain how he helps others who are also fighting the disease. This Essay Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, I'm Tony Garzavale with the Gomez Law Firm. And on behalf of the Gomez Law Firm, we'd like to wish everybody in the San Antonio community and surrounding areas a happy holidays and a happy new year. And give a special thank you to the men and women in uniform. Thank you for all the sacrifices you make for our freedom. Being diagnosed with ALS can be life changing. Formerly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS attacks motor neurons in the spinal cord and brain. The disease affects thousands of military veterans. The night team's Jonathan Cotto spoke with one of those veterans and shares how the disease has given him a new outlook on life. As many as 30,000 people are affected and there's at least 5,000 cases each year. Those at highest risk, military veterans. Juan Reyes, a United States Air Force veteran, was diagnosed with ALS in 2015. A diagnosis he says completely altered the course of his life. I now require uh, the use of a wheelchair and I require assistance with all daily activities. Dr. Richard Bedlack, professor of neurology and founder of Duke ALS Clinic at Duke University says ALS is not that rare of a disease. It doesn't seem to matter when or where they served. All military veterans are about twice as likely to get ALS as non-veterans. Reyes served as an Air Force medic for 21 years and also worked as a defense contractor. The illness forcing Reyes to retire but says it hasn't permeated everything in his life. I'm still a husband a father, a brother, a son, and those come first um, before ALS, and they were there before. In spite of his physical limitations and constant medical appointments, Reyes is involved in many facets of advocacy and awareness, which he believes keeps him busy, engaged, and alive. I have something to look forward to every day that when I wake, <clears throat> and that is to um, help people understand the challenges of living with ALS and the needs that uh, our ALS community needs. Reyes's activism and those of many whose voices have been silenced by ALS have finally been heard. This week, President Biden signing into law the Accelerating Access to Critical Therapies for ALS Act. I'm hopeful that it gives me 
more time with my loved ones. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And we certainly wish the best to him and his family. Shifting gears to weather, it was a balmy Christmas season here in South Texas. It's been warm pretty much everywhere across the United States and in certain parts, but uh, we've got some changes on the way. Yeah, we do have to wait for a week, though, until yeah. those changes get here. Uh, and until then, it's going to kind of be more of the same. Tim was speaking about a balmy Christmas yesterday. Our high was 77. That's the second warmest Christmas in the last 50 years in wow. San Antonio. So, yeah, we definitely were warm. But today was an interesting day, all because of stubborn morning clouds. I'll tell you what I mean. Take a look at your screen. Here's a look at today's satellite and temperatures. So we all started off with a fog, drizzle, mist, and temperatures were in the 60s. It was kind of cool for the first part of the day, but definitely muggy. And then by about noon, that's when we started to see skies clear from the south. Take a look at temperatures at 215 this afternoon. It was only in the low 60s above 1604. So we're talking about Canyon Lake area, Bernie Stage area, but where there had been plenty of sun for a few hours, 83 in Pleasanton. And eventually we did see sun at the official site at the airport and we were able to spike up to 75 degrees in less than two hours from 68 to 75. And so tomorrow is going to be a very similar day to today. We'll have the morning clouds. They will be stubborn and then they'll start to clear from south to north into the afternoon. And as soon as you see the sun, it's going to warm up. Now, if it stays cloudy past the middle uh, of the early part of the afternoon, Noon, you should see a high temperature closer to 70 degrees tomorrow. But if you end up with sun earlier in the day, you should see a high temperature near 80 or even in the 80s, like in Pleasanton, it got up to 87. 84 was the high increase of Springs. But notice in Kerrville, the high temperature was only 67. And we have already seen fog redevelop in many areas out there. Visibility is already less than two miles in Kerrville, and we do have a haze on the horizon here in San Antonio. So as as we start the day tomorrow, once again, there will be fog and drizzle. It'll be a gray and damp start to the day. If you have early travel plans tomorrow morning, be prepared for visibility less than a quarter of a mile in some places on the roads. And then by about noon, that's when we're going to start to see those skies completely clear. If you see those clouds linger a little bit longer, like up in the hill country and out to the west, that's where high temperatures are going to be a little cooler in the afternoon, but it's still going to get warm. 77 for the high in San Antonio. That is 15 degrees above the average for this time of year. 70 for the high in Kerrville, so a little bit cooler up in the hill country, but 83 in Catula, 84 in Laredo, and 83 in Pleasanton. Now, across the nation, there's a big winter storm happening for the northern tier of the United States. This is going to cause some problems with weather delays tomorrow, I'm sure, with uh, the airlines. But across south central Texas and the southern tier, we're dealing with this high pressure system that's been allowing for things to be warm. And and it's going to continue to allow for that warmth for the remainder of 2021. So we are going to be seeing morning clouds and fog Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with highs in the uh, upper 80s, uh, pardon me, upper 70s. And even by New Year's Eve, it's going to be warm as well as we welcome in the new year. Now look at the dew point tracker again. As I mentioned, morning fog tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. Then we see a brief dip in the humidity. That's from a very weak cold front. That'll take away the morning fog Thursday, but it'll be back Friday and Saturday. Then a strong front will arrive on Saturday that is going to knock uh, part of me strong front will arrive early Sunday morning overnight Saturday into Sunday knocking temperatures from the 80s and 70s into the 50s and mornings from the 60s into the 30s so that strong front will be on its way it's just going to get here uh, next Sunday tomorrow though more of the same morning fog and drizzle 61 afternoon sun near 77 in the afternoon and same weather until that front arrives Saturday night into Sunday morning. 2022 starting off with a cold bang. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. We'll have a preview of instant replay right after this. All right, the Dallas Cowboys face the Washington football team for the second time in three weeks. But before kickoff, they won the NFC East. With more on that and what's on instant replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg Simmons. Yeah, well, that was kind of cool. Okay, yeah. we won that. Now let's go out and win the number one seed down the road. Yes. And if there is ever a time to have a mercy clock in the NFL, tonight be would be the night. And the Houston Texans scored their first win streak of the season. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of instant replay. Four-man rush. 
intercepted. It's the Marcus Lawrence down the sideline. He goes, and look at that. The Dallas Cowboys look to beat the Washington football team for the second time in three weeks on Sunday Night Football. The Cowboys' offense shines. How did they clinch the NFCs before kickoff? We'll show you. Mills, he's looking deep down the field again. He's got a man and a touchdown. The Houston Texans score their first win streak of the season by beating the L.A. Chargers at home. Rookie Davis Mills throws two touchdown passes. Running back Rex Burkhead has a career day. We will show that to you as well. Everybody wants to like live up to the legend status of him, so everybody's kind of taking their games to the next level. And both the Oklahoma Sooners and the Oregon Ducks hit the practice field today. We're getting ready for their showdown, the 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl this week. We'll get you ready for that big game. The Spurs hosted Detroit Pistons at home after winning three out of four on the road. But a key starter is out due to COVID. All that plus, who wins the Valero Alamo Bowl tonight? You decide. Instant replay is live. And it's after the night beat. Final week of the year. Always a busy one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. All right, Greg, we'll see you again in a little bit. We'll see you right after this break. Tonight, millions of Americans are back home after a day full of travel, while others might be finding themselves stranded in their current location due to winter weather or canceled flights. That's a scene for many on one of the busiest holiday travel days. Here's ABC's Kenneth Moten with all the details. The holiday weekend has not been merry for thousands of airline passengers as they travel home from their holiday destinations. According to flight tracking website FlightAware, more than 1,000 flights entering, leaving, or within the U.S. were canceled on Sunday. More than 3,000 were delayed. Cancellations and delays expected Monday. Where yes. are you guys heading? Michigan. And was your flight canceled? It was. Yes. So what now? So we rebooked. Yeah, we scrambled. And 2.4 million people expected to be traveling on this day after Christmas. Travel platform Hopper calling it the third busiest travel day of the year. Four major carriers, Delta, United, American, and JetBlue, citing staff shortages amid a surge in cases of the Omicron variant. It's one of the things that's out of your control. So you just take a deep breath and try to find the best alternative. Delta and JetBlue are calling on the CDC to shorten the quarantine period for vaccinated workers to five days to ease crew shortages. Millions also expected to hit the roads as they return home. Winter weather in parts of the country complicating travel. Parts of Interstate 80 from Colfax, California to the Nevada state line completely closed with no estimate on when it will reopen. In western Minnesota, snowy conditions led to this crash. Dozens of vehicles involved, but only minor injuries reported. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. Sticking with air travel for a moment, air travelers who create issues while aboard planes can lose their TSA pre-check credentials. FAA officials summed it up this way, quote, if you act out of line, you will wait in line, unquote. According to the TSA, more than 10 million Americans have pre-check credentials that allow them to bypass certain security measures. But as the FAA points out, TSA pre-check is a privilege, not a right. There were about 5,800 complaints of unruly behavior by airline passengers in 2021. Most of those were related to mask rules. A Carnival cruise ship that saw a small COVID-19 outbreak has returned to port today in Miami. The Carnival Freedom ship left Miami on December 18th and stopped in Curacao on Tuesday. But cruise line officials say a small number of people tested positive. Its planned stops at the Caribbean islands of Bonaire and Aruba were canceled after being denied entry. At least four ocean cruise ships were turned away from ports or banned from letting passengers off due to the outbreak. South African leader Archbishop Desmond Tutu has passed away. He was known as the voice of the anti-apartheid struggle in South Africa. Back in 1984, he was given the Nobel Peace Prize for his role in South Africa's campaign to end apartheid. Tutu was also extremely vocal on global issues. Even in his later years, the Archbishop addressed a wide range of issues, including the civil war in Syria, climate change, and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was 90 years old. Media representation, it affects everyone in different ways. For some, it's easy to find TV characters or movie characters who look like you or share similar experiences as you. But for some, it's a little harder to find especially when focusing on racial identity. Our KSAT producer Alexis Page spoke with two local aspiring filmmakers about 
why representation matters. Representation can be defined as a display of an artistic likeness or image. As I got older, a lot of those roles were for white people or just like, they were never for Latinos specifically or there just wasn't a lot of variety. Esmeralda Hernandez is a local aspiring filmmaker. She noticed early on representation for her Hispanic culture sometimes is lacking. Growing up, at least, there wasn't a lot that I saw myself or my community represented in. I feel like the show I watch all the time because it gave me some so sense of validation was like the George Lopez show. A similar sentiment another local aspiring filmmaker, Kristen Quintanilla, agrees with. Especially with her biracial background, she's half Hispanic and half white. People need to be seeing people that look like them on in media and they need to know that they also have that same voice. Another problem when it comes to representation, when there is so few examples, you end up being the spokesperson for your race. Adrian Sebro, assistant professor of media studies at UT Austin, explains how this affected Black-led TV shows in the 70s. They had the unasked for burden of the race, right? They're not at, like, money, they don't, they don't want, because it, it's a tough burden. It's, it's like no one wants to be the spokesperson for the entirety of a race. So why is it important to have proper representation? It just validates your experience of being a human and being able to morph into these characters, whether you're a person of color or not. Anna Bendanya, a communication studies professor at St. Mary's University, says the solution is letting those who are underrepresented tell their stories. Minorities of any label should have a responsibility to put their stories out there. Like, let us hear it, like, say it loud. Something both Esmeralda and Kristen hope to do in the future. So for me, I feel like it hasn't been as much of an issue, but for other groups, um, it definitely has been. But I want to give people the platform so that they can share their stories. And to see the spotlight shine positively rather than negatively on people like that are always misrepresented in some way. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. Now, both Esmeralda and Kristen were inspired to become filmmakers after joining SACC. They offer after school programs for both middle and high school students, and it's not just filmmaking. They teach art, theater and news media. For more information on how to be a part of SACC, head to KSAT.com. Today was a warm day. If you saw the sun after about 2 p.m., it got warm. But for some areas, clouds stuck around, mainly up near Bernie. Temperatures were only up in the 60s in Bernie. But for all of the state of Texas, it was a fairly warm day. Take a look at Abilene, 90 degrees. That shattered their record of 81. All of these areas that you see boxed, those are cities that reached a new record high today across the state of Texas. In fact, the highs were some 15 to even 30 degrees above the average high for this time of year. But changes are coming. We just have to wait a while. Our next strong cold front is scheduled to arrive by this time next weekend. I'll detail this and of course our forecast for tomorrow in just a few minutes. Tim. Thank you. It's a film about an underdog that's also looking like the underdog at the box office. We'll have the results of this weekend's box office results right after this. Well, it's that time of year again when we reflect on some of the most memorable moments you, the community, have brought us on What's Up South Texas. The night team's Jaffney Gray with a look back on the year 2021. What's up, South Texas? Exploded with fun in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> with majorette dancing. We do lots of back bends and pop outs and death drop, toe touches. The music man. So much good feelings from serving and especially seeing the people with smiles and singing along. It's like somebody dancing. Like <sighs> the wooden guitar pick maker. I usually follow the grain of the wood and I'll start something and I don't know what it is until it's done. The environmental skateboarder. It's very euphoric. It's, it's, it's a big, big escape. A taxi company owned and operated by this strong woman. Sound like alert and that's what you must be when you are driving. <laughs> 
a remarkable graffiti artist. Anything that you do with a little bit of passion becomes a work of art. A Bear County deputy luchador. Once I put this mask on, it's a whole, totally a whole different world. The instructor behind the only high school mariachi band in San Antonio. saw how two successful women grew up poor, but now they give all they can. If you have the same opportunities, you just have to go and get it. That word impossible is there because it is possible. what I say, right? We saw how San Antonio police officer gives back through the loss of his partner. Anything that I could keep these kids engaged in outside school activities besides drugs, violence. <laughs> a father with a special musical bond with his daughter. We saw how a once homeless man serves others experiencing homelessness. For somebody to get one day clean or one day sober. And how an Air Force veteran provides housing for homeless vets. If this guy can do it, maybe I can do it. How a Cibolo restaurant stepped up for the first responders during the pandemic. I don't think we ever had a thought of, you know, giving up. God's hand was in it. What I'm looking at is a bunch of toys, okay? And how one little girl gave a big Christmas to families in need. <laughs> I think this is going to a happy ending for all of the kids. <laughs> Your stories are what What's Up South Texas is all about. That's just God working through me, you know. I just walked down the road. But if, if, it, if God inspires you to get up and want to walk too, God bless you. For What's Up South Texas. You put your heart to it, you put your mind to it, you can get it. You don't have to move mountains, but you can make a difference. You don't have to conquer the world, right, for what you'd like to see happen. Every little bit helps. I'm Daphne Gray, and have a happy new year. I don't know what was my most favorite, going to see Christmas lights, wearing shorts and flip-flops, or, you know, swimming. I know. It's been a crazy Christmas. You did swim, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I, oh. I, I heated the pool, but only me and the dog got in. I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with everybody else that's visiting. Well, you know, I wish we could have a little bit of that Christmassy feeling around Christmas time, but it's going to come a about two weeks, a week late, we're going to get a cold front starting Sunday. This time next weekend, it's going to be chilly and you're going to need that jacket. But December has been impressively warm. Take a look at this year's average temperature compared to the average temperature of December's in the past 20 years. It stands out, doesn't it? The average temperature this time of year for December is about 53 and a half degrees. And so far we're at 63 degrees for the average temperature this year. Now, not only is that the warmest it's been in 20 years, but this is going to go down as the warmest December in 139 years. Yeah, so it's not just you imagining it. It has been a very warm December. Take a look at highs today. Our average is 63. We got up to 76 degrees here in San Antonio, but notice how much cooler it was in Kerrville, 67. And it was 87 in Pleasanton. That is a huge 20 degree difference from Kerrville to Pleasanton. It even got up to 90 in Catula. The reason for that, we had morning clouds stick around into the afternoon right along the Balcones escarpment. And that is going to be the case tomorrow as well, too. We're going to have fog redevelop in the overnight hours. And in fact, take a look at Kerrville. Visibility already down to zero there. So by the start of the morning tomorrow, we are going to have, uh, once again, dense fog, mist, and drizzle. It's going to be a damp morning tomorrow. Visibility already down to four miles at Bernie Stage Airfield. So take a look at the future visibility. Tomorrow, the visibility will be less than a quarter of a mile in many places. If you have early travel plans Monday morning, you're going to need to pack your patients and keep on those low beams because that fog is going to be dense. And then much like today, the areas south of Highway 90 are going to see the sun before that Balcones escarpment I-35 uh, corridor. And so that's going to have a big difference on afternoon temperatures. It'll be in the low 80s in Southern Bear County, but it'll likely only be close to 70 degrees up near Kerrville, as you can see here on this map. Even out toward Del Rio, clouds are expected to stick around a little bit longer there. You have Aldi and Hondo, so highs in the upper 70s. Highs in the upper 70s in San Antonio and in Pleasanton, it'll be in the low 
low 80s. Now a wide view here, there's a lot of weather going on in the northern tier of the United States around this trough of low pressure. That's going to cause some travel issues for airlines tomorrow, uh, but a high pressure system is what's kept us unseasonably warm. Christmas Day, we got up to 77. That was the warmest, uh, second warmest Christmas in 50 years here in San Antonio. And we're going to continue with this trend of morning clouds and dampness through Wednesday and afternoons will be warm to the end of the year. 2021 is going to end with high temperatures close to 80 degrees. Even as we ring in the new year, it's going to be mild and there should not be any major weather problems as we ring in 2022. So tomorrow, Monday, fog and drizzle, 61 degrees in the morning. It'll be in the 60s for the morning hours and then sunny and warm in the afternoon. 77 for the high south winds at 5 to 15 and mild in the evening with fog redeveloping overnight again weather deja vu for us tomorrow. But that next strong cold front is going to arrive Saturday night into Sunday morning of this upcoming weekend. So on the 2nd of January, and it's going to drop high temperatures into the 50s and morning lows could be in the 30s for a good portion of uh, the first week of January. But for the last week of the year, the last week of December, more of the same for us. We're calling it ditto weather, ditto days ahead for us over the next few days as we wrap up 20. 21. Nothing major to mess up the fireworks displays on Friday. That's right. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Marvel's Spider-Man No Way Home hits a new pandemic record. How much it made after just three weeks in the theaters. Ball and Faith film American Underdog kicked off in fifth place with 6.2 million. The King's Man premiered in fourth place. The British spy thriller garnered 6.3 million. It was a disappointing debut for The Matrix Resurrections. The fourth installment in the famed sci fi franchise opened in third with 12 million. I want to run. I want to hide. The animated musical Sing 2 debuted in second place with 23.7 million in ticket sales. You're not Peter Parker. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Spider-Man No Way Home ruled the box office for the second straight week with 81 and a half million. The superhero adventure has hauled in a colossal $1 billion worldwide, the first film to do that in the pandemic era. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hock. Our San Antonio Spurs return home to host the Detroit Pistons after their best road trip of the season where they won three out of four games. But a key starter is missing after having to go into the NBA's health and safety protocols. Let's find out more about that and what's on instant replay tonight. Check it in with Greg Simmons. Yeah, that's their superstar, DeJounte yeah. Murray, who are they down tonight. But remember, Detroit is the worst team in the <laughs> NBA. And it's not all work and no play for the Sooners and the Ducks when it comes to preparations for the 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Our San Antonio Spurs are back home after beating the likes of the Jazz, the Clippers, and the Lakers, and they pound the Pistons tonight. Well, all the highlights will take you inside the Spurs' winning locker room after the game. And one of the Spurs' starters was placed in the NBA's health and safety protocols after COVID testing was conducted this morning at the Spurs' practice facility. <laughs> That's awesome. Before they meet in the Alamo Dome this Wednesday, members of the Oklahoma Sooners and the Oregon Ducks had a whale of a time, or in this case with Flipper at SeaWorld as part of the Valero Alamo Bowl festivities leading up to the big game. We'll take you live tonight inside the Cowboys winning locker room and our play of the week features Spurs history. Instant replay is live and it is next. What a game for the Cowboys. A lot of points by the Cowboys tonight, a lot of points by the Spurs, too. Yes, yeah. both. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. You got we'll it. see you in just a bit. We'll wrap things up right after this. Finally tonight, something good. Today marks the first day of the week-long celebration of Kwanzaa. It follows Christmas and is a non-religious celebration of African Americans' ancestral roots. And that's all for us now, for all of us here at KSAT 12. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to tune in to Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. An all-new edition of Instant Replay starts right now.
evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Here's hoping you had a great Christmas with your family and friends. And here's looking forward to the new year. The Dallas Cowboys clinch the NFC East before they face the Washington football team on Sunday Night Football. That's because the Raiders beat the Broncos. So you would think there may be a little letdown against their arch rivals, but that wasn't the case at all on game day. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Because there is still another huge incentive to win out in their last three games starting tonight with Washington because they were only a game and a half behind the Green Bay Packers for the top seed in the NFC and the first round bye that goes along with that. First play for Washington, they test Trayvon Diggs deep and he passes the test. His 11th interception for Diggs that ties Everson Walsh for the franchise record of interceptions in a season with 11. That would lead to this. Third down on the Washington five-yard line. Dak Prescott swings it out to Ezekiel Elliott out of the backfield strike in for the 7-0 lead. Cowboys second possession. First and goal on the 9-yard line. Prescott on the bootleg. He hits a wide open Dalton Schultz in the flat. He jogs in to make it 14-0. The defense comes up big again. Demarcus Lawrence swats the pass out of the air. Comes up with a pick. And look at him go. Breaking tackles down the sideline. Steps over Taylor Heineke on his way to the 40-yard pick six or 21 and nothing first quarter lead. Second quarter now. Washington showing some fight, but it's on their own sideline. Defensive tackles Jonathan Allen and Darren Payne joining each other on the bench. Payne got up and then struck, it stuck a finger in Allen's face. Allen sprang up and got caught Payne right with the right cross. Meanwhile, the Cowboys kept rolling. Dallas on the Washington goal line. They call on former Steel Knight Terrence Steele's number on a tackle eligible play. Steele blocks the releases to the end zone and then makes that grab for his first career touchdown at 35-7 Dallas lead. Then just before the half, Coop wants the ball more and Prescott obliges him. Amari just inside the Front pylon for a 13-yard touchdown. Prescott throwing for 321 yards, four touchdowns in the first half alone. The second half is just customary as Dallas leads 14-7 at the break. Cowboys scoring in all three phases. Washington punting from the end zone. Corey Clement cuts up the middle, blocks the kit. Chauncey Golston is there. He catches it in the bounce and the score just like that. And the lead balloons to 42 points. Here is the final. It was fun to watch. 56-14. Dallas improves to 11-4. Let's take you inside the Cowboys winning locker room. We got you know got started early both on offense and defense. You know the two takeaways early. We you know set the tempo and you know the scoring drives. So I um, mean you know, we wanted to play a complete game, and I, I think we you know I think we accomplished that tonight. How, much How you- aware were you that? The Raiders had won, and that you guys had clinched the division before you even went out there tonight. I, I was aware, but we, we didn't talk. We, you know we didn't talk about it. We, we felt that we really needed to. Perform like you always do each and every week. These games are important, you know, momentum, um, victories in December. So, and I, I just thought, you know, our play style and staying the course was exactly what we needed to do today. So, I thought it was a good performance by our team. Did the team not know it? You just didn't discuss it with the team. I didn't discuss it with the team. I mean, I'm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if guys did know about it. But yeah, I mean, we're, we were in our pre pre game, and then you know, obviously um, seeing the score. I mean, I had it on the locker room in, in my locker room, but. Yeah, I, I mean, that's it, to me, it was irrelevant. You know, we, we needed to go out and perform tonight, and our guys did it. Did you guys celebrate the ch- division championship? Yes, we had the hats and T-shirt moment in the locker room, so you know, a lot of fun. The guys are enjoying it. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, kind of stinks. You only get to celebrate the midnight tonight, so they're in a hurry. <laughs> there you go. All right, next up, the Cardinals come calling on the Cowboys Sunday. Remember, that game has been flexed at 325 p.m. in AT&T Stadium. Look who is in the stands today in Houston. Olympic superstar gymnast Simone Biles. There to cheer on a boyfriend, Houston safety Jonathan Owens and the Texans. And you know what? Must have brought him a lot of luck here. Just before the half, Houston down two. Davis Mills going up top to Chris Conley for the 41-yard strike. Puts the Texas up 17-12. to 12. Fourth quarter now. Third and goal for Houston. And they hand it to Rex Burkhead who plows his way in for the touchdown. The second of the game rushing for career high 149 yards and the defense seals the win. Defensive back to Barry Thomas picks off Justin Herbert and he's taking it back 48 yards on the pick six for Houston. That's two wins in a row and their largest output of the season as we go to the scoreboard. Here's the final 41 to 29 over the Chargers. They improved to four and 11. Let's take you now inside the winning Texans locker room. We come out here every every week with the same mission and the same goal in mind and that's to win football games and we have the guys in the locker room to do it. He understands what his job is and and I think Tim and our offensive staff have done a great job of making sure that we're giving him things that he can make good, quick decisions with, that he's comfortable with, and he's growing with this time. 
All right, next up, the Texans travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers Sunday at 3.05. Steelers and Chiefs, top seed in the AFC. The Kansas City Chiefs can lock up the AFC West with a win. First quarter, second and goal for the Chiefs. Look at running back Clyde Edwards bounce off two defenders of the line and bounces outside for the score. Final minutes of the first half, Patrick Mahomes swings it out to Nicole Hardman, who makes a great stop and go move to score from eight yards out. The Chiefs are now the AFC West champs, 36-10 to the final. Bucks and Panthers, Tampa Bay can clinch the NFC South with a win. First quarter, Keyshawn and Vaughn takes a handoff. Watch him go to work here. Slips through the line. Stiff arms one defender as he races down the sideline. Cuts it then back at, in, to the 55-yard score. Look at that. The Bucks steamroll the Panthers. 32-6 to hit their first division crown since 2007. Rams and Vikings. Los Angeles can clinch a playoff berth with a win. Three-point game in the third as the Rams receive the punt. Brandon Powell on the return finds Dale along the sideline, pointing out blockers as he turns on the Jets for the 61-yard touchdown. Rams also got a big game from running back Sony Michelle, who ran for a season high 131 yards in one score. Rams win a close one, though, 30 23. The win also puts the Cardinals into the playoffs. Bills and Patriots. Buffalo quarterback Josh Allen went into Foxborough and took control of the game. The AFC East throwing for 314 yards, three touchdowns. Isaiah McKenzie was his go to target with 125 yards and a touchdown. Bills scored points on every one of their possession in the second half, besides their last one, where they took a knee to ice the game. Bills win at 33 21. Broncos and Raiders here. Both teams are 7 7, fighting for a wild card spot. Denver up 13 7 of the half, but here come the Raiders. First and goal for Las Vegas. They hand it to Peyton Barber, who finds a seam, flips into the end zone for the touchdown and the lead. Raiders keep their playoff hopes alive. They win at 17-13. Giants and Eagles. Eagles on a roll as of late, winning six of their last eight. Philly scored 31 points in the second half. Jalen Hurts to Lyman. Lane Johnson for the four-yard score put the Eagles up by 24. Philadelphia losing the seventh playoff spot in the NFC with the 34-10 win. They could clinch a playoff berth with some help with a win and some help next week. Ravens at Bengals. Cincinnati quarterback Joe Burrow had a game for the record books. His second-year quarterback set a franchise record for 525 passing yards, breaking Boomer Esiason's record of 490 yards set back in 1990. The 525 yards is the fourth highest in league history. He also tossed four touchdowns in the 41-21 win. Lions and Falcons. Atlanta needing to win out to keep their playoff hopes alive. Four quarter tie ball game. Matt Ryan, 12-yard touchdown toss to Hayden Hurst. Gives Atlanta the lead. Lions driving 39 seconds to play. They need a touchdown, but backup quarterback Tim Boyle's pass is picked off. Falcons hold on for the win, 20-16. to 16. The Bears and the Seahawks. Seattle needing a win to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. Bears down 24-17 with a minute to go. Nick Foles finds Jimmy Graham for the 15-yard score. That ties the game. Bears going for two in the lead. Foles to the back of the end zone for Demir Bird, who makes a leaping grab. Bears win at 25-24. Seattle still has less than a 1% chance of making the playoffs, so you're saying there's a chance. Jaguars and Jets, two teams fighting for next year's number one draft pick game would come down to this. Fourth and goal for the Jets. Zach Wilson fakes the handoff, has to scramble to buy some time as he throws to the end zone for the lineman Connor McDermott for the score. Jets win 26-21. The silver lining for the Jaguars in the loss, they created some space between themselves and the Jets for the next year's number one draft pick. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. Who wins the 2021 Bolero Alamo Bowl? Will it be Oklahoma or Oregon? Vote now. We'll have the results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Coming up, more from the Cowboys locker room, plus all the highlights and postgame reaction from the silver and Black. Spurs again just run the floor. The Spurs won their third straight game tonight by dispatching the shorthanded Pistons, and they did it without DeJounte Murray, who was a late scratch due to COVID. Health and safety protocols will hear from the victorious Spurs. Both Oklahoma and Oregon hit the practice fields here in Alamo City for the first time. And the sports guys decide who wins the Alamo Bowl. All that and more when Instant Replay continues live next.